Most popular plumbing fittings explained. Now, if you're new into plumbing, or maybe you've been in plumbing for a while, but there's some things you haven't done yet, today we're gonna go through a whole bunch of fittings and talk about them, what the fittings are, what top fittings they are, and explain just a little bit about how they're connected. So first of all, we're gonna start down here on the end and this is something that every plumber used to have is a flaring tool on their truck. That way they could take a normal piece of soft copper, cut it, ream it out, put it in the flaring tool, squeeze it down and create a flare. And that flared connection, man, actually they held pretty good. So this is a brass adapter that's made to go into something and make it where a flare nut can attach a piece of copper, stainless steel, whatever it is you're hooking up onto here. But Copper is what's normally used by plumbers. So having a flare tool, learning how to use it can really help you out in case you ever run into something like this. Because if you don't have a flare tool, what you may end up having to do is go get another adapter, take this out, that way you can have a different type connection. But when you see this with this beveled edge like that, you'll know it's a flare connection. Now next, these are different type fittings. I've got a black union here. I've got a brass cap and plug and I've got a PVC plug. Now, they're all a lot different, but they all connect the same. They all connect through a threaded connection. The union, the union is where you have to join two pieces of pipe together and a coupling won't do it. You've got two pieces that are already there. They're threaded and you need to connect them. So you screw one piece in here, you screw one piece in here, line them up and tighten them up. Now. On the inside of this union, you've got almost like that flare connection we just talked about, a male and female side where it goes together and seals it off. And then by tightening it up, that's what actually makes it seal and hold. Now again, these are threaded connections. You can get these unions in copper and PVC and black and galvanized and brass, all kinds of different things. Threaded connections, Man, they're, they're good connections. They're still considered a mechanical joint, but like on the threads, you'll put Teflon tape, pipe dope, snug it up to where it never leaks and chances are you'll never have a problem. Even on PVC, I use Teflon tape and pipe dope to give me that added security. That way I know I don't have a leak when I'm joining something like this. Now we get into a CPVC fitting. This is a glue fitting and this is a 45. Now. We'll get over into PVC here in a little bit. This is a 45 also a little bit bigger, but CPVC fittings are good because of their temperature rating. You can actually use them on hot water. Now here in Texas, we don't use a lot of this. We use a lot more copper and PEX and things like that. But CPVC is a fitting that sometimes is used off TMP valves, off drain pans, anything like that where it could be hot water. You want to use this instead of PVC just because of the temperature rating of CPVC. Believe it or not, this does about the same thing this does just for different type pipe. This is cast iron. This is actually a hub and spigot. You've got your hub. Now, if you've ever seen me do the video before where we put the pipe in, pack it with oakum, and then pour lead in here, the fitting really hasn't changed. Nowadays though, they've got a neoprene gasket that you can put in here. It looks like this. And literally you put this in here, then you put duck butter inside here and on the cast iron pipe. That way when you push it in, it slides in. And I'll teach you a quick trick while we're here. The way to put these in is grab the inside and bend it up where you shape it kind of funny. Put it in, line it up right where that gasket goes in there. And that's what it looks like. Put your duck butter there, put your duck butter on the end of the pipe, and I'll teach you an old trick. If it's a piece of pipe that you had cut, take your hammer, tap down the edges, and if it's still kind of rough, I've actually used a little piece of duct tape around it just to make that edge smooth. That way it goes in even easier. And when it's cold outside, that's a great trick to know. Now we're gonna get into the copper fittings. Now we've got different type copper fittings. We've got brass and we've got copper. These are solder joints, both of them. Now this is what's called like a drop eared L. You wanna be able to screw this in and mount it. That way that nipple coming out does not move. It doesn't turn, you don't have any problems at all. This one is a T and 
if you're installing this or if you need to order one, you always call your run size first. So you would call three quarter by half inch by half inch. Your bullhead side is the last side called. Now, like I said, brass copper, you can solder copper to both of these. You just gotta know what you're doing. Okay, so the T solder joints like this, well, it's copper. Copper lines is what we have a problem with here in the Southern United States where we get leaks. Now, maybe y'all get them up north too, but man, we get a lot of them down here. And that's why this video is sponsored by Leak Pro. If you've got a copper line under a house leaking, Leak Pro is the best equipment I've ever used to help me find out where those leaks are. If you wanna learn more about it, go to leak-pro.com and check it out. Learn about the equipment and the training to help you find what you're looking for. Now, whenever we do find those leaks and fix them, sometimes ProPress is what we'll use. If you're under a house and you can't get the water to stop, which normally we can almost always get the water to stop, you're gonna end up replacing a section. So pro press, solder, brazing. Normally if you make a solder joint under a slab, we've always tried brazing them. But like I said, pro press is a way that can be done, can be used, and it's becoming more and more popular. Whichever way you join copper, believe it or not, these actually hold pressure very well. Solder joints are always gonna be better than anything else. And we're gonna talk about another fitting, a push to connector in a little bit. Solder is always the very best. That's what you wanna to try to use if that's what's there. So we'll talk more about these in a little bit. This is an MJ fitting. Now this is just part of it and I know that, but what you've got, you've got certain ductile iron steel pipe that you can bolt this on and it goes into a fitting that's got a hub similar to this and it's got a gasket similar to this. But when you tighten this down and there's bolts that go in here, what it does is it tightens it in and pulls it in to where it won't leak. So this is something that is really used on big water utility lines, things like that. It's a great fitting to know how to use. I've only put together you know, a few of these in my life just because of what it is and where it is. This is, like I said, mainly utilities, but it's a great fitting to know how to use now we talked about sticking a piece of pipe into the cast iron fitting. This is a CT adapter. And what it is is if you're making a repair, the good thing about this, you can slide this up a piece of pipe, drop your piece of pipe in place and slide it back so you don't have to have a room for a hub or anything. A CT adapter, and like this one, this is made for six inch cast iron or plastic to six inch cast iron or plastic. So it's the same on both ends. They do make them where one end's bigger than the other. And they also make them where it's a solid stainless steel band around it. And you've got multiple clamps. What I love about those, those are shear bands. Those are made to push in, tighten up, line everything up, hold it perfect, and you're never gonna have to worry about it. If you make a repair under a house or under a building or even underground with the fitting like this, you can see it's just rubber. That could still shift and cause a problem that you really don't wanna deal with later. So if you're doing one underground, make sure you use the shear band and get it in there right. We've talked about a couple of different ways to join cast iron. This is another one. This is a no hub band. Now the cool thing about this is you put the piece of pipe in, you put the fitting in, like this, put your pipe in here, and then tighten your bands up. Now, I always like tightening up the middle first, then going to the outside. One cool trick I'll teach you is, if you're building a header, make sure your bands are all turned the same direction, your nuts are all facing the same way. It just makes it look so much better, and when somebody walks up, they're gonna see the professionalism, and they're really gonna respect you and the work that you're doing. But these, these bands, these Husky bands, the, the, these heavy duty bands like this, these are great, and really, they work very well. Now we get back into the PVC. Now the PVC, this is a glue joint. I love it because basically glue and primer. I remember back whenever I started plumbing, everything we put in underground was cast iron, but once we came above ground, we could go PVC. Now PVC, it's good, it works, it's flexible. We normally don't have a lot of leaks, but you can have breaks on it. So depending on where you're at, depending on how well it's bedded, things like that, you could never have a problem with it or you may run into something later. 
Now this is another PVC. This is a slip joint. This is the kind of fittings that you find under your lavatory, under your kitchen sink, things like that. You've got a piece of pipe that goes into a joint like this. You wanna put your nut on first, then put your bubbled washer on there because when that slides in this lip right here and tightens up, that's what's gonna keep it from leaking. If you've got a leak like this under a lavatory, under a kitchen sink, anything, sometimes just going in and checking that nut and seeing if you can tighten it up. If not, maybe you loosen it up, clean it up and tighten it up again. But if you loosen it up and it's a P-trap or something, remember, you could cause a leak. So make sure you've got a towel, a pan, something under it to catch that water. Now this is also a solder joint. This goes on a half inch water line. This is an angle stop. Now this is just a quarter turn angle stop for under a lavatory, kitchen sink, toilet, something like that. And then on this end of it, it's a compression fitting. So say you've got some chrome tube, you can stick it in here. You'll have your nut and your ferrule on it. And as you tighten it down, this little brass ferrule is gonna tighten down on that copper or brass tubing, whichever you've got, and squeeze it in to keep a leak from happening. Now, a compression fitting, also the flex hoses are made to have a nut and all this built inside of it, so you can just put it on and tighten it up, and now you've got that flexible hose to hook up with. Push to connect fittings, they're becoming more and more popular. We've tested them, some of them test out really, really well. Some of them test out really well on copper, but not so well on PEX. So be careful of what you're using and you should really only install these when they're accessible. Don't bury these underground. Don't put them behind the wall. Don't put them in an attic, anything at all like that. Now like the PVC out West in California, they use ABS, a black plastic fitting. Not sure why they use it there and we use PVC here so much, but man, it is, it's the way it is. I have found two houses in Texas that have ABS fittings and it blew my mind because they had a complete ABS install under the slab. And to be honest, each time I saw it, I'm like, wow, I, you hardly ever see this. Out of 44 years of plumbing, I've only seen that twice. Just like that ABS and glue joint and the CPVC, there's PVC. PVC is smaller, it can go all the way up to, God, I think I've installed 12 inch. I think I've installed up to 12 inch fittings and I've seen even larger going on a tour in the Charlotte plant and see how they made them was really cool. But man, these things here, actually there's airlines here in the barn and they're running out of PVC. So it's used for a lot of different things. I don't know that I'd want it for an airline, but I have seen it many, many times. Then we get down to the end. You, you've got your PEX and your Upanor fittings. And it depends on if you're using PEX A, PEX B, what you're gonna use, how you're gonna use it, but and this is modern technology. This is what we're getting to more and more often. Now, copper, man, that's the old school way to do it. And I think still at the end of the day, it's the very best way to do it. It's up to you what you use. I'm just telling you, make sure that you understand each of these fittings, how they're used, how the piping systems are used, and what piping systems they go in. And each one of these can be installed underground. Each one of these fittings we do find installed underground, even the push to connect. But that's why this video is sponsored by Leak Pro. If you wanna to learn to grow yourself as a plumber, your plumbing company, and help your customers by providing more and more services, leak detection is phenomenal. Learning to do leak location and find out where the exact leak is and then how to repair it is something that you can learn to do and it's a great thing for you or your business. So this video is sponsored by Leak Pro. Go to leak-pro.com, check it out, and check out the training and the equipment. That way you see what it's all about. If you love this video explaining these things to you, or you think you know somebody that might wanna see this to learn more about what they do, share this with them. But if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done it yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you don't miss anything.